Hey, that's kind of cool. I look like I've got bug eyes. Oh, oh I'm a bug. Oh, hello, I'm back again. Weird. So Boxing Boa has asked for a care video on the Velvet Worms, so I will get that put together for him, which will come after this introduction. Uh, check out Boxing Boa's page, a uh, really sound guy, really cool, uh, really passionate about his animals and the care of, especially his snakes, really, really cares for his snakes and wants them to be kept as properly as anybody can and it's not always necessarily what's right. For, uh, for somebody who's a breeder or a keeper, it's about what's right for the snakes and that's what's priority for Boxing Boa is making sure that the snakes are kept what's right for them, not what's going to turn over a quick buck, uh, power feed and that kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, check out Boxing Boa's page and coming up now is a care guide on uh, the velvet worms as requested by you my friend. So here it comes, I hope this answers all your questions and I hope you enjoy it. Check out Boxing Boa. Oh, oh man. See that there? It actually fired out. Now I need to, I actually need to correct. Oh, sugar, I've got a skippy. I need to correct myself because I, this whole time, have believed. Sorry for the poor filming. Two seconds. Okay, right, as I was saying, I've always believed it was actually the antennae that should go out. Just underneath that, they've actually got two evolved front legs that have turned into these uh, glue cannons, if you will. And that's actually uh, what produces the glue. Now, it has hit this cricket already with a wee bit of glue. Just going to see if I can... It'll hold the cricket in place and then once that glue is bonded the cricket it's quick right away and um, they've actually got mandibles underneath and these mandibles uh, can I almost saw through any defensive armor the prey item might have and then they inject the digestion enzymes into it much like a spider or anything else would so I actually just want to correct you guys and myself, that's not the antennae that shoot the glue, it's, it's these two adapted legs on the underside. The mouth parts are circular with a kind of serrated saw uh, that kind of grate slash in past any defensive armour as I was saying that the animals have. And then the mouth parts uh, inject these digestive enzymes and then they basically just, like a lot of other predators, just kind of sook their prey up. So I'm going to try and uh, move this round. I hope I caught that first part where it initially uh, squished out the glue there. I think I did. Oh, it's just a matter of trying to keep this cricket. This cricket oh, sugar is maybe a bit on the large side is maybe the problem. I could do with some smaller ones. But it has taken a wee bit of glue, right? I'm going to try and reposition it. I'll maybe try a wee meal one. Okay, so here what I've done is I have zoomed in and slowed down uh, the glue shot. There it is. I've slowed that down right down nice and slow so you can see just how far uh, and almost accurate that shot was. So whilst you see me attempt to feed it some mealworms and uh, a rather dodgy bit of camera work, uh, I'm just going to give you some rough information care guide uh, as requested by Boxing Boa. So the first thing we need to know is these guys, they like it nice and cool. They come from tropical habitats, uh, high air humidity. They lose water uh, twice as fast as an earthworm and four times faster than caterpillars. Although their bodies are waterproof, uh, they have these tiny little nodules covered in sensory hairs all over them. 
uh, to help detect prey. But anyway, like it nice and cold, that's the problem a lot of us keepers face uh, when keeping these is, you know, our scorpions, our centipedes, millipedes, spiders, we want to keep them nice and warm. These guys, we need to keep them cool. Uh, so a lot of people will keep them in the refrigerator or get a mini fridge, but I don't really fancy them sitting next to my, my butter and my cheeses and stuff. Uh, and it kind of defeats the purpose of me of having a pet that I'm going to hide away in a refrigerator somewhere. I kind of want to be them on show. So as you may have seen in my other video, I've played about with different ideas. Ice packs um, against the side. I'm now using cool packs. Uh, that I can just, I've got so many and I just alternate them between the freezer. So there's always a cool pack uh, on one side of their tank. So we wee bit about these things. They range between about 2 to 8 inches, depending on the species. There's obviously a number of different species uh, closer related to the tardigrade kind of thing, the water bear. Somewhere down that same branch. Uh, lifespan is around 6 years. Uh, about 13 to 43 pairs of legs, depending again on the species. They have evolved very little in the last 500 million years. So... Uh, <laughs> they're quite adapt little little dudes and dudettes females generally tend to be larger than the males uh, they can some species only need to be mated once throughout their life cycle and they can retain sperm uh, some live birth and some lay eggs this species I have are live birth and I think it could be between, between 2 and about 40 odd offspring um, so I don't know the exact numbers of that. Um, they can take down prey items roughly the same size as them using this, this glue as you've seen there in that video. It's recommended that you use rainwater or in my case as you saw in my other video I use uh, river water. Uh, the problem with tap water is that it's got chemicals and other uh, chlorine that kind of stuff in it that would effectively kill uh, these wee velvet worms which obviously is the last thing we want to do uh, as I mentioned they've got these two just below the eyes and the, the antennae there they've got these two front legs that have evolved into glue cannons if you will that shoot out the glue prey in the item as it, as it mixes with the air, the chemical bonds up, the item gets stuck, uh, the velvet worm will then latch on with its mouth parts, the outer part of the mouth part will saw through any harder shells, any external parts it needs to cut through, and once it's got down to the soft fluid, uh, the inner mouth parts will inject the, the venom and start uh, ingesting the prey item. So what I've done here is, I've, because the, the larger one, which I suspect is female, of uh, possibly a gravid female, uh, the larger one, she's already used her glue. She doesn't seem to be wanting to hunt these things. Uh, so I've got the smaller one out, and I'm trying to tempt him uh, with the tweezers. I say him, I'm just assuming it's him because he's smaller. Uh, it could just be a younger specimen. Uh, trying to tempt that one to feed uh, the other thing that's probably worth noting, and one of the reasons I've maybe not had much success, is traditionally these guys are nocturnal hunters, and a lot of them live in very dark dwellings, moss, rotten wood, uh, some species are found living in caves. So me filming during the daytime, and sometimes with my flash on, probably isn't very productive to getting the footage I was wanting to get. So I think what I'm going to have to do is try and film at night time. Um, I, I don't know how I'm going to go about using a light source so we can actually see what's going on but I'll work on it we will you know we'll get there so anyway I just wanted to go over that and sort of give a rough guide as to how to care to these so cool humid lots of moss uh, rainwater or river water uh, lasts about six years um, and I think that's me pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover um, so yeah, if you've got any questions at all, just uh, pop it down into the comment section. Uh, if you ever want to find me, my name is Adam Connolly. I can be found on Facebook, World of Mantis, World of Myriapods, 
World of Scorpions and World of Assassin Bugs. They're, they're the groups I mainly am on. But in the meantime, uh, Boggs and Bo and anyone else who watches this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. I hope everybody contemplates keeping these because they really are quite uh, unique, quite awesome uh, little things. I actually thought they were slightly bigger than this, but they do get bigger depending on the species. As I say, some can reach up to about 8 inch. But obviously when they stretch out, they're much bigger as well between their they're more condensed form. So anyway, this is them back in their house. Thought I'd give it one last go to get them feed in uh, back in their, their, their actual container. Uh, it's not going to happen. But anyway, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to, again to everyone that subscribed, to everyone that watches my videos, uh, and to everyone that gives me shout-outs and, and, and anything else you guys do. All the support I've got is just fantastic. So thank you ever so much. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you all later. Take care, guys and girls. Bye-bye. And one last thing. They're not worms nor velvet. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Bye-bye, girls. Bye.